Reproduction Introduction Have you ever wondered what makes you feel nervous before your exams? Do you know what makes you feel the hunger? Or what is it that makes you feel tired and stressed at times? Well, all these happen due to chemical substances called hormones that are working together inside our body, coordinating and regulating various body functions. The endocrine system. In human beings and most vertebrates, there is an organ system called the endocrine system consisting of a collection of bag-like structures called glands. These glands are located at specific places throughout our bodies and do big jobs like controlling, regulating and coordinating several functions of our bodies through chemicals. These chemical substances released by the glands are called hormones. The major glands that make up the human endocrine system are the pituitary, the thyroid, adrenals, pancreas, the ovaries and the testes. Pituitary gland. The pituitary gland located at the base of the brain is called the master gland of the endocrine system because its hormones control the activity of many of the other endocrine glands. Pancreas The pancreas are located near the liver and secretes the hormones insulin. Insulin regulates the level of body sugar. Ovaries The ovaries are located in the pelvic region of females and secretes the hormone estrogen. Estrogen controls the development of secondary sexual characters in females, such as development of breasts, etc. Thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is located at the base of the throat and secretes the hormone thyroxine. Thyroxine regulates body temperature and plays a major role in growth and development. Adrenal gland. The adrenal gland is located near or on the kidneys and secretes the hormone adrenaline. Adrenaline helps in the defense of the body in emergency situations. Testes. The testes is located near the male genital organs and secretes the hormone testosterone. Testosterone controls the development of secondary sexual characters in male, such as facial hair. Why reproduce? For the continuity of life, all living things produce organisms of their own kind. This is called reproduction. Reproduction is the means by which life goes on. The process by which living beings produce offspring of their own kind is called reproduction. Human reproductive system. Baby formation. Almost all living bodies have special reproductive cells which are different in a male and a female body. These reproductive cells are called gametes. The female gamete is usually called an ovum and a male gamete is called a sperm. The two gametes join together during a process called fertilization. This initiates the formation of a baby. An overview of the stages involved in the formation of babies is given as shown. Gametes are released by males and females. Each of the gametes contains one half of the hereditary characters from its parent. The male gamete, sperm, and the female gamete, ovum, join together during fertilization to form a zygote. The zygote has one complete set of hereditary characters, one half each from the mother and the father. The zygote divides to produce a large number of cells. Development continues further and at puberty, Children become young adults capable of releasing gametes. The zygote develops inside the mother's womb into an embryo. Development continues and the baby is born. The baby grows into a child. Puberty Puberty is the start of the time when a boy is biologically ready to become a father and a girl is biologically ready to become a mother. Some of the secondary sex characteristics that develop in girls and boys are shown on the screen. Growth is very rapid at the puberty stage of an individual's life. The changes that one undergoes during this period are both physical and psychological. 
psychological changes include frequent mood changes, one moment you may feel happy and the very next moment sad, attraction for opposite sex, etc. Male reproductive organs. Testis or testicle is an endocrine gland. It is made up of numerous coiled tubes which produce sperm cells. When a boy reaches puberty, the testes are stimulated by the pituitary gland to produce the male sex hormone testosterone. Vas deferens is a narrow duct which helps to transport sperms from the testes. Several fluids are secreted inside this duct by several glands which mix with the sperms to form a fluid called semen. The penis transfers the semen and with it the sperms into the female body. An organ called urethra is present inside the penis. Vas deferens carries sperms and opens in the urethra. Both the penis and urethra are also part of the male excretory system and help to excrete urine. Female reproductive organs. Ovary is an endocrine gland. There are two ovaries in a female body. Each ovary has the shape and almost the size of an almond. When a girl reaches puberty, the ovaries are stimulated by the pituitary gland to produce the female sex hormone, estrogen. Fallopian tubes are the tubes that carry the ovum released by the ovary for fertilization. They are also known as the oviducts. Uterus is the organ where the zygote matures and grows till it is ready to be born. The embryo, the developing baby, grows and develops inside the uterus, which is also called the womb. Process of fertilization. Human babies begin their life inside their mother's body. The main stages of fertilization in human beings are outlined below. Once a month, an egg cell is released from the ovary by a process called ovulation. The egg cell moves into the oviduct or the fallopian tube. During sexual intercourse, a male transfers sperms in the vagina through the penis. The sperms pass through the cervix into the uterus and along the oviduct. A single sperm meets the egg cell in the oviduct and fertilization takes place here. The fertilized egg continues its journey down the fallopian tubes into the uterus. The fertilized egg implants itself in the uterus wall and develops into a human embryo. Sexually transmitted diseases. There are many diseases that are caused and spread only by sexual contact or during sexual intercourse. Such diseases are called sexually transmitted diseases, STDs. The known causative organisms of sexually transmitted diseases are microorganisms like bacteria, virus, yeasts and insects. Some sexually transmitted diseases such as syphilis and gonorrhea can be cured by treatment with antibiotics. Herpes and AIDS are viral STDs for which scientists are still trying to devise a permanent cure. AIDS is a dangerous disease that weakens the patient's immune system, most of the times beyond repair. Hence, it is very important to maintain sexual hygiene to keep oneself safe from such diseases. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Baby Inside the Womb Let us understand how a baby grows inside the mother's womb. Once the fertilized egg reaches the uterus, it implants itself there. During the first eight weeks after fertilization, the baby is called the embryo. The embryo attaches itself to the uterus wall with the help of a disc-like structure called the placenta. The baby stays and grows inside the mother's womb uterus for about 40 weeks to develop fully. This is called the gestation period which is usually about 40 weeks in human beings. During this time the baby takes in nourishment from the mother through the placenta and the umbilical cord. From 8 weeks after fertilization till birth the developing baby is called a fetus. Inside the uterus the baby floats in a pool of liquid amniotic fluid 
that also acts as a cushion and protects it. Placenta is a disc-like structure that helps the embryo attach itself to the uterus wall. Umbilical cord is a cord containing blood vessels that connects the placenta with the baby. Care after birth. The journey from inside the womb to the outside world is called birth. A newborn human baby is very small and is unable to look after itself. The mother nurses her young one on her milk, which helps it to become stronger and develop a high resistance towards diseases. A newborn baby depends on people around him or her for all basic needs and therefore needs a lot of nursing care. A baby also needs to be vaccinated against diseases right from birth. Menstrual cycle. A woman's reproductive age starts at puberty and generally continues till she reaches her middle age, 40 to 50 years. The reproductive age may vary from individual to individual. During the reproductive period, the two ovaries inside a female body take turns to produce an ovum or egg and one egg is released every 28 days. The process of release of an egg by an ovary is called ovulation while the cycle of producing and releasing mature ova or eggs is called the menstrual refers to a month's in Latin. During the menstrual cycle, wall of the uterus passes through several phases which are controlled by two hormones, estrogen and progesterone. The first phase of the menstrual cycle usually lasts for about four to six days. During this period, the lining of the uterus is shed accompanied by a loss of blood. This duration of the first phase is called a woman's period. Technically, this phase is called the menstrual phase or menstruation. The start of the menstrual cycle at puberty indicates that the girls have now acquired the ability to have a baby. The various changes that take place inside a woman's body during one menstrual cycle are outlined in the figure. Sex of a baby. This is determined by a special part of our body cells called chromosomes. These are located inside the nucleus. Chromosomes are thread-like structures found in the cells that carry information in the form of genes. These genes determine all inherited characters, including the sex of the child. Each cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes. Of these, one pair contains the genes for sex. There are two types of sex chromosomes, X and Y, named after their shapes. Female cells contain the XX pair, while male cells carry the XY pair. The gametes contain only one set of chromosomes consisting of one member of each pair. The female egg cell contains an X chromosome to represent the sex chromosome, while a male sperm cell may contain either of the two sex chromosomes, X or Y. When the egg gets fertilized, the sex of the baby will depend on which sperm fertilizes it. When the egg gets fertilized, the sex of the baby will depend on which sperm fertilizes it, as shown in the figure. If the sperm carrying the X chromosome fertilizes the egg, it would be a girl, since the chromosome's pair will be XX. If the sperm carrying the Y chromosome fertilizes the egg, the baby will be a boy, since the pattern will be XY. Metamorphosis a frog lays eggs in large numbers. The process of laying eggs in large numbers is called spawning. The baby that hatches out of a frog's egg is called a tadpole. The tadpole undergoes several changes before it becomes an adult frog. In the same way, a caterpillar that hatches out of a butterfly's egg becomes an adult butterfly. The process of developmental changes by which a tadpole changes into a frog and a caterpillar into a butterfly is called metamorphosis. The word metamorphosis is derived from the Greek meta meaning after and morph form. The life cycles of a frog and butterfly are shown in the figure. Egg hatch. How do chicks hatch out of eggs? Do you know how a baby chick hatches out of an egg laid by a hen? Egg-laying animals 
like hens, birds, snakes and crocodiles lay fertilized eggs. The parent animals sits and warms the eggs or keeps them safely in a warm place till they hatch and the baby comes out. This process of hatching the eggs by sitting on them is called incubation.